Hi, my name's Gemma Jones and I'm from the Liverpool Echo and we're here today with Laura Hamilton from A Place in the Sun. Uh, great to have you. Aww. Thanks for making time for us. Thank you for having me. Great to, uh, great to chat. Great. Um, you've been very busy so far this morning. Uh, how are you finding the day so far? Yeah, it's been a busy morning. The exhibition is packed. Obviously, it's opened today. We're here all weekend with some of the other presenters coming along. And it's great, great to see the turnout. Great. Um, so obviously you'll be giving loads of the public some advice on what to do when the house hunting. Uh, I was just wondering, what is your number one piece of advice for house hunters? Oh gosh, there's so many bits of advice that I could give when it comes to house hunting. But I would say one of the most important things is when you're thinking about buying a holiday home or relocating abroad permanently, uh, consider what the area is like year round. Uh, because some particular areas, you know, in the summer months, they might be really busy. In the winter months, they might be completely dead um, so it's really important you know when you when you go and look at a house in the UK the advice is to go and look at it at different times of the day and um, different days of the week do exactly the same when you're looking for a property abroad but kind of make it you know year round what it's like year yeah. round yeah um, what is one of the most common mistakes you see buyers make when they're looking for a home abroad I, th I think a common mistake that people make when buying abroad is not doing the research to see what it's like year round you know they'll buy somewhere yeah. and think oh wow it's really busy 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 and then at the end of the, the summer months when people you know leave that resort if it's a you know a, a holiday resort rather than um, a kind of residential area the shop shut and yeah. you know things close down and they're like oh this is not what we expect it to be so that's probably one of the most sort of common thing common mistakes that people make yeah on the show as well a lot of people always go with the plan to buy a house somewhere that they've never been before so what do you think of that like we do often get people come on the show that have never been to Spain and they buy a property in Spain which is amazing and uh, you know sometimes I think well is it because we're you know holding their hand and guiding them through the experience and they feel feel comfortable I mean I guess when people see something they like I mean I'm very much like this if I see a property I like you just know you know when when it feels right it feels right so sometimes i am like wow you've never been to spain before and and i think well spain's the number one place to buy property overseas so when people haven't been there at all i'm like wow <laughs> that's that's incredible um but when you know when you find that property and it's right yeah. you, know, you, you know. know yeah um sometimes though you do get people who like you can show them a property with everything they've asked for and they stop the search um but they, they stop the search in a certain room because they think they've seen enough from that one room. What is something that will personally make you stop a property search if you run into a home? I think, again, you know, if people are viewing somewhere and they just feel it's not right for them, yeah. sometimes they, they just know. When we're filming the TV show, what you have to remember is we spend around two and a half hours in yeah. each of the houses we view, whereas when that translates to the television show, it only ends up being on screen yeah. for like a minute and a half, two minutes. Um, so we get to see everything and there might be certain things that have, have happened like externally that might not be edited into that particular um, that particular house tour. So, but if you, um, I think if I walked into somewhere and um, and I just knew, then, then I'd probably call it a day and say, no, this isn't for me. Actually, sometimes if I viewed properties and I walk up to them and I look at like the location or you know external things that you might not have seen in marketing material that yeah. you, you actually see when you're there in person, if it felt wrong to me, then I get it. I wouldn't. I would be like, I'd only be going in just to be nosy. It, it's <laughs> not going to be you know for me. Yeah. So I, I totally understand when people feel that way, and I'd rather people be honest. I think that's what we say to people the whole time when we're filming a TV show if if you feel it and it's great tell us if yeah. you're thinking oh this isn't right just be honest and I think sometimes people are a bit nervous about that because they think well this is someone else's home I yeah. don't want to offend them I don't want particularly you know it's going to be on TV and it's like well just because it's not right for you doesn't mean that it won't be right for someone else you just have to be honest the whole time great um, what's the weirdest thing you've ever seen in one of the houses that you filmed in? <laughs> the weirdest thing that I've ever seen in in any houses. I mean, sometimes you go into properties and you see some like quite ornate, unusual. Look. Uh, sometimes when you go into people's houses um, abroad, you might see some quite unusual, ornate like dolls. Yeah, they're a little bit like <laughs> freaky. Um, 
I, th I think that's probably sort of as weird as it gets. It does sometimes blow my mind when people are wanting to sell their home abroad and they leave all their washing out everywhere. <laughs> so, you know, there might be the old, like, you know, pants or knickers or whatever. You're like, oh. So we end up having to tidy that, obviously, away. Well, we, I, we don't, but the crew sort of tidy everything away before we arrive. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, when you want to sell a house, you want it to look as best as it can look. So it, it does sometimes make me laugh that people just, they just leave their smalls out. <laughs> So the opposite end of the spectrum, what advice would you give to someone looking to sell the house then? I think if someone's Clean looking up. to sell their, their <laughs> home abroad or out in the UK, you, you want to present it the best way yeah. that it, you possibly can. Um, declutter, you know, the smells in, in places yeah. are, are really, really important. You know, if you've got pets, if you've got dogs and, and you're aware that there's like a, a, a smell of dogs in there, try and air the property. Um, yeah. And the same, you know, with, with smoke, you know, that kind of thing. You want it to smell good. That's the first thing that hits you when you walk into the, the, the room um, or, you know, the property. Just, yeah, presenting curb appeal as well. Yeah. If uh, it looks great from the outside, then it's going to be appealing, going to be attractive. People will want to step through that, that front door. Great. Um, what would your dream home look like? My dream home in the UK or my dream home overseas? Oh. So at the moment, I am. Um, I bought a house at the start of last year that I've been slowly sort of renovating and rebuilding, yeah. and um, I took it all the way back to um, literally all the way back to brick and knocked down every wall inside oh. the property. So I reconfigured um, everywhere and um, the layout. So I very much kind of made that space work for me and my children. Um, the location really works for you know where I am in my life, needing to get to the airport, the children's school, um, and you know friends close by. So I'd say that you know where I'm, I'm my home in the UK is. I'm kind of getting it to the point where it's it works for me right now. Um, yeah. I think that when you say dream home. I mean, I've bought and sold quite a number of times since I was 19, and I'm, I'm passionate about property, yeah. you know, whether it's in the UK or overseas. I love everything about the, the process. And I think that what might be your dream home at one time might not be your dream home at another point in your life. And so I think it's all just dependent on where you are, what's going yeah. on. I mean, right now, the house that I've, I'm, I'm living in, it, it works. But when the children are older... Who knows what, I what I might do? Home. I might, I, you know, I might say, well, I don't need to be here. I don't need it, it to be have this many bedrooms. Actually, yeah. I'm going to relocate abroad. So sounds great. And it, then ask me what my dream home will be, because <laughs> <laughs> a dream home can be, you know, a dream home could be a, a one, two bedroom apartment yeah. with beautiful views over a, a, the sea or the, you know, or the mountains, whatever. But I think it, it does very much depend on where you are in your life at that time. Definitely. Uh, do you think that you're going to pass on pass on your passion for property to your kids as well? I know that Rocco and Talia love travel because yeah. they've travelled so much with me. I've been very fortunate with the place in the sun that they've kind of come along with me on my travels. So they've got a real sense of adventure, both of them. And it is interesting how they've also been part of my the build project. Um, they've seen it at every stage and um, they they care about, you know, looking after their home yeah. and their bedrooms. Um, they they have been with me sometimes away and they'll go, oh, let's do a little property tour. Let's have a little look around. And I'm like, oh, my word, they spent far too much time with me <laughs> looking at houses. But um, no, do you know what? Whatever they do, wherever they go in their, in their lives, whatever career path they follow, I'll just be supportive of, of them. And as long yeah. as they're passionate about what they do and they love you know love what they do because you have to you'll be doing it a lot of your life then i'm i'm backing them you know 100 percent all the way yeah. and um if it's if it's property then then so be it but they're too young at the moment i think to know what they want to do did they watch it on telly yeah um they they sometimes will watch me on this morning as well now, yeah. aren't you so yeah. it's like even yeah. more of you <laughs> so, so sometimes they will watch me like um, when they're having breakfast before school, if I'm working with this morning yeah. and I'm out on location, they'll put the TV on and they'll, you know, see me somewhere and be like, oh, yeah, 
there's mum. Um, but, you know, they just, it's all they've known, I suppose, yeah. that this is me doing my job. And, and they're fantastic if I'm on location with a place in the sun. And, and, you know, they come and visit at the end when we finished filming. They, they know all the crew. And um, it's just, yeah, it's, it, it's great. But I don't think they're phased by the fact that I'm on telly and they're just like, oh, all right, mum. <laughs> there she is again. <laughs> um, if A Place in the Sun ever gave you the chance to partner up with another one of the presenters, like Johnny or Leah or anyone, who would you pick and why? So um, we sometimes do A Place in the Sun home or away, which is yeah. where a presenter will be in the UK and a presenter will be overseas. And um, we've, we sort of mix that up over the years so I might be with Johnny I might be with Jasmine but we're never actually in the same place yeah. at the same time and the way our filming schedules work is we're very rarely in the country at the same time although saying that Jazz and I do live quite close together um, you know in the UK so and our children are very similar ages and when we're abroad and we're in the same location we all hang out together I mean it was only like a few weeks ago Jazz and her children and my children we all went out for a curry after yeah. school so and I'm seeing Jazz this afternoon for a coffee so I would say you know I love I, I love all of the guys that, that we all do you know a similar job well we all do the same job but we're all very different um, but I don't get to see everyone but yeah. I do get to see Jazz we go to the gym together and uh, you know, she's she's just an amazing person. I love her to bits, yeah. and she's become a very good friend over the last twelve years of doing the, oh. doing the show. So yeah, who knows? You might see me working with Jazz sometime soon. So you need to tell Channel Four to get used together and watch the space. That's what I'm saying. Watch the space. <laughs> that'd be great. No, that'd be really because you've both been on it like the longest amount yeah. of time as well. So um, you know, yeah, pros Except Jazz is like tall, long legs. You know, like this <laughs> goddess. And I'm the short one, which is why I have to wear these big heels. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> um, and with the people who buy the properties, do you ever keep in touch with any of them to see how they're getting on? Yes, I've kept in contact with loads of people over the years, Place and Sun. Uh, people have actually messaged me this morning saying they came to the exhibition a year ago yeah. and then they came on the show and like a year on, you know, they bought on the show with me in Greece. That was Lisa and Wayne. And I've stayed in people's houses, uh, I've rented them from them when I've gone back to that location and filmed where we bought. So yeah, I mean, oh, the, wow. it, I, I think it's when you've been part of that process with somebody and, yeah. you know, it's a huge thing in their lives, then absolutely. I mean, three weeks ago I was in Gran Canaria and there's a, a couple there, Sean and Ian, who live in Gran Canaria now. And I, um, I messaged them and said, guys, I'm coming over to film again, uh, let's meet up. And so the particular house hunters that I was filming with that week, Julian and Andy, I introduced to oh, the yeah. house hunters that I filmed with Sean and Ian a few years back. And we all went out for a night in the Yumbo Centre and we watched a drag show and they were up on stage. And yeah, so a absolutely, where oh. possible, keep yeah. in contact with them. Oh, that's lovely, that. Do you ever check in on the Twitter hashtag when the show's actually on? No, I don't. I, I'd <laughs> like to sure. do, but I don't, have, I don't have time. I mean, look, I'm very yeah. proactive on... Anyone who follows me on Instagram, like, I love to post on Instagram. Yeah. I sometimes post on Twitter. Um, but even, even though I'm proactive on it, like, I don't capture every single thing that's going on in my life. I mean, this yeah. morning, I left home at 430 to drive to, to Manchester. And, you know, I've got my, my children. I had to coordinate, you know, somebody coming to the house at that early in the morning yeah. so when they wake up they can go to school um you know last night I was at my football training with my son like I'm I'm juggling like obviously the children and working and but I don't I don't capture everything that I'm doing yeah. so um life is can be very very busy so I would say that I spend probably more time maybe posting on social media rather than actually looking. Yeah. Um, I, I don't feel like my time is, is best spent by kind of looking at what's going on on social media. Is that really bad? <laughs> no, it's not. Not at all. Don't blame me. Yeah, it's because it's... also, like, I think sometimes then you see if there's negative things. Oh, you don't it want can, to read the yeah, negativity. It can, yeah. it, and it does affect you, you know. Ultimately, we're all human and we're all trying to, like, do our best and whatever. And so when you read yeah. negative things... I just think, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't want negativity in my no. life. I, there's enough negativity in the world. I don't need that. So, yeah. Definitely. yeah. 
Why? What does it say? I'm not hashtag <laughs> it's actually now. always like it's always so much love for like the presenters on it. Like I follow it, you know, when I'm watching the show as well. Right. It, the presenters get loads of love. It's unfortunately the buyers and whatnot that don't oh, really? get as much. Yeah, oh. but but um, it's quite a one of the nicer hashtags. Oh, I'll okay. Say. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and obviously you've joined this morning recently. Yeah. How's that going for you? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. I love, you know, I've been doing quite a few bits and pieces with them since last year. And um, I've done like a property thing with them, a travel thing on a cruise, travel thing on a train through Europe. Um, and then I do some of the competitions and I've got a few other little bits coming up with them. So it's just lovely. Because my, my sort of background, background is, was live television yeah. um, when I started in kids telly. So... I, I really like like live. I really love travel. I really love property, and they're just they're just a lovely, lovely team, and it's yeah. it's great. Just as they are in a place in the sun, yeah. you know, it's like good vibes, positive vibes, good people, good energy, good fun, and that's what it's all about. Is there any other shows that you'd like to be a part of? I don't know if I've got any other time at the moment, <laughs> to be honest. Um, no, I'm 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 the kind of person that uh, finds it difficult sometimes to say like no like if there's yeah. if there's things that come up and whatever I'm like oh can I squeeze it in my diary or can I make that work um so who knows who knows nobody knows what's around the corner do they so yeah. and I I just think well be open to opportunity and experiences and then you never know where, where it's going to lead so yeah again I, I don't know Hopefully we'll see it on a lot more though because you are entertaining to watch. Uh, and factual oh, as well. So. Oh, entertaining. <laughs> In what way entertaining? Good, good. <laughs> oh, God. Um, that's all I've got to ask you for now. Oh, I just want to say thank you, you for your time. It's oh, been great to chat. Oh, lovely to, to chat. To chat. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.